Karangahaki Gorge in the Bay of Plenty region is steeped in early gold mining heritage and cloaked in a beautiful bush. I'm going to take a wander and find out more about it. The Karangahaki is probably one of four key historic sites that we've got in the Kaumamaku Forest Park. Um, obviously this is a gold mining site and that's closely tied up with the Wairongomai Valley down near Te Aroha. They're, they're both uh, hard rock gold mining sites um, and probably from the same hydrothermal activity, the same geological period. All these sites are really closely related and all of them relied on bush tramways like what we've got here in the Karangahaki. There's mountain biking tracks, there's also dog walking tracks, but if you're a keen tramper, you can go further afield, you can climb Mount Karangahaki and go further south into the Kaumamaku Forest Park. So the Karangahaki is sort of the gateway to the park? Isn't Most it? definitely, it's the northern gateway into the park. Further south from here, there's you know, mountains to climb, rivers to cross, and, um, and tracks to explore. On this side of the mountain, it's uh, the Hauraki Iwi. They're separated from the Bay of Plenty uh, area by two big gorges that run through the Karangaheke area. The name of this area was the Kuaha or Hauraki, and translation could mean the gateway to Hauraki. Any visiting iwi from the eastern side uh, would need to announce the arrival here. The Hauraki iwi, uh, they resisted all mining attempts until some sort of agreement was struck up, and that happened about 1875. So in 1875 was the first uh, year that miners were allowed to work this area. How did they build the tunnels back in the old days of mining? They used to use gelignite. They used to have a man turning the drill while the other man who was the striker, he used to hit the drill with a sledgehammer and the guy would turn it and they used to do around about three feet a tunnel a day. This is the ore body that the miners gained access to. Do you think there's still gold in them there hills? A lot of gold in these hills. A lot more than they've ever taken out, yeah. This is an ore skip, and these nifty little carts were used for taking the ore from the tunnels down to the stamping battery where they processed the gold. The original tunnel used to finish 30 metres back up from this point, and um, the public used to be able to walk in, but they used to have to turn around and go back out, and it was Doc's idea that we put a loop in, so we decided we would put a tunnel through. Did you get any gold out when you were digging this tunnel for the public? Nothing that we could say, hey, put this aside and crush it and take it and, Sneak and it up make a bonus. Way. Yeah, without Doc finding out, yeah. <laughs> Best exciting part about it was we came out 300 millimetres off the surveyed line. 300 millimetres? Of course you did well. How do you do that? How do you stay so accurate to the plans? It's an old method that they use by hanging a string from the centre of the tunnel yeah. and they tie a stone on it and then you line it up with the one back there oh, and you course. follow the strings. 130 years ago, this area was a bustling metropolis of miners, tramways and all kinds of machinery. The miners may have moved on, but their memory still lives on.